Hi folks, my name is Cole, and I'm a graduate student of immunology. Today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at a new biological approach for HIV therapy that targets T-cells. So hang around with me throughout this entire video to get all of the relevant background information so that way we can dive into some exciting experimental results. Plus, if you look in the description below, there's some information on how to get your hands on a free NFT. Now to the topic at hand, HIV. Worldwide, it is estimated that there are about 38 million people living with HIV, with the majority of them living in Southern Africa and developing nations. Now, if you look at some of the stats on HIV from a decade ago, we're actually doing pretty well. Yes, there are more people living with HIV, but there are less people becoming newly infected and less people dying from HIV, which is a testament to how far we've come in being able to treat this disease. HIV is not a particularly new virus, as it was first transferred to humans from chimpanzees in Africa in the 1900s. From there, it spread to the US in the late 1960s and was recognized as an epidemic in the 1980s. Since then, there has been great progress in our ability to treat HIV, but there is still no functional cure for it. Now, HIV infects many groups of individuals, particularly gay men, people who inject drugs, and sex workers and their clientele. This can be transmitted by unprotected sexual contact, sharing needles to inject drugs, and can even be spread vertically from mother to child. Now there are many stages to HIV infection. The first stage is the acute infection, which lasts about two to four weeks long and is described as one of the worst flus that people have ever experienced. From there, this progresses into something called clinical latency which is an asymptomatic form of infection that can last for many years. From there, if untreated, this progresses into AIDS, and HIV targets and kills CD4 T cells to cause immunodeficiency, allowing it to persist in the body. AIDS is characterized by a CD4 T cell count below 200 cells per millimeter cubed. This means that you are unable to fight off new infections. People that have AIDS become susceptible to opportunistic infections, and without treatment, their lifespan is about three years. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, is a retrovirus, which means that it has an RNA genome that gets reverse transcribed into DNA in the host cell. HIV utilizes many different proteins in its virions to mediate its pathogenesis, each one of which is important for a different stage in the HIV infection cycle. Now, the HIV infection cycle goes through many steps. Today, we're going to focus on three in particular. We're going to focus on the first step, which is the binding of HIV to the host cell. This utilizes the host cell receptor CD4 and the binding of its co-receptors CCR5 and CXCR4 to gain entrance into the host cell. From there, the viral products enter the cell and the RNA genome needs to get reverse transcribed into DNA, which travels then to the nucleus, integrates itself, and transcribes the viral DNA into RNA, which is used for creating more viral proteins used for the rest of the infection cycle process. There are many proteins that HIV has that mediate these actions. Today, we're gonna to focus on two. We're gonna focus on VIF, which helps with reverse transcription of the viral RNA genome, and we're going to focus on TAT, which aids in allowing more viral RNA to be created. Nowadays, thanks to advances in modern medicine, HIV infection is no longer a death sentence. This is due to the use of antiretroviral therapeutics. These drugs need to be taken daily to maintain their efficacy. Each drug has a different mechanism of action that functions in inhibiting a different stage of HIV replication. Now, we're not focusing on these drugs today. Today, we're talking about a biological approach to fighting HIV infection. This approach utilizes T cells, which are one of the most important cells in our immune system. Now, we have many different cells in our body that help mediate immune responses, that all work together to help clear infections. T cells are part of our adaptive immune response, which is a slow to initiate the first time, but is a specific and allows for more efficient clearing of pathogens. Now, there are many different subsets of T cells, and the subset that we're focusing on today are CD4 T cells. CD4 T cells are also known as T helper cells, they stimulate B cells to produce pathogen-specific antibodies and prime cytotoxic CD8 T cells to kill virally infected cells. Now, when CD4 T cells prime CD8 T cells, they secrete cytokines like interferon gamma, IL-2, and TNF-alpha to help with the inflammatory response. Our immune cells get transported all over our body via our blood, and by taking a blood sample, which contains many immune cells, and isolating them, these cells can be further utilized for therapies. Currently, there are new T cell therapies for cancer, chronic viral infections, and viral reactivation post-transplant. 
they utilize a reproduction deficient viral vector like lentivirus to stably integrate helpful DNA into the host genome that allows cells to fight off infections or disease. Now there is previous work that outlines the role of cytotoxic CD8 T cells in helping to clear HIV infections. But as time progresses, these responses wane and HIV can rebound. So it has been previously shown that HIV elite controllers, so people that do not progress naturally into AIDS, have a CD4 T cell specific response to HIV. And CD4 T cells are crucial for sustaining an anti-HIV response. Now, as it stands, very few studies have used CD4 T cells as a therapy before. I wanna take a moment and really highlight why this type of research is important. It's important because as it stands, antiretroviral therapy can suppress viremia, but there is still no functional cure for HIV. There's also not a system in place for the growth of HIV antigen specific CD4 T cells. And recent advances in T cell therapies would suggest that a similar type of approach can be used against HIV. If you also think that these are some important reasons to research this topic, go ahead and tap the like button. Either way, this brings us to the paper that we're talking about today, called Preclinical Development and Clinical Scale Manufacturing of HIV Gag-Specific Lentivirus Modified T-Cells for HIV Functional Cure by Lee et al. from American Gene Technologies and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in Maryland, USA. Now, in this study, the authors developed an optimized protocol for efficient clinical scale manufacturing of cell product enriched for HIV specific CD4 T cells that resist HIV destruction and infection. They do this utilizing a product called AGT103. AGT103 is a recombinant lentivirus vector, which utilizes a unique promoter region to encode microRNAs. Now to understand microRNAs, we first need to know what messenger RNA is. Messenger RNA is what you can think of as the physical blueprint in the cell derived from DNA, which holds all of your computer blueprints, uh, to create proteins. MicroRNAs bind to specific messenger RNAs, and this interaction prevents the proteins from being created. AGT103 targets CCR5, which is that co-receptor that HIV uses for viral entry. It also targets the viral proteins VIF and TAT. Now, when looking at AGT103, one of the most important things to assess is whether it actually works to prevent the translation of proteins. To do this, the authors used CCR5 expressing cells and transduced AGT103 into them and found that AGT103 effectively depletes CCR5 from these cells. They also found that this response was specific and does not target receptors that are similar in sequence like CCR2. The authors also looked at whether this affects VIF and TAT. So with cells that were transduced with AGT103 and transfected with HIV proviral vectors, which allow for creation of HIV proteins inside of the cell, they found that VIF and TAT levels were reduced in cells transduced with AGT103. The authors then assessed the ability of AGT103 to protect against HIV infection. So they took cells that can normally be infected by HIV and transduced them with AGT103. In doing this, they found that AGT103 protects against CCR5 and CXCR4 tropic HIV infections. Now, the next question that the authors had was, can AGT103 be used for people that have HIV already? They found that infected cells will normally be able to infect other susceptible cells. But when transducing these infected cells with AGT103, this decreased the ability of HIV to infect other susceptible cells. They also looked at this in the context of primary human CD4 T cells. So they asked, can AGT103 inhibit HIV replication in primary CD4 cells? So cells normally infected with HIV are able to infect other susceptible cells. But with CD4 T cells that were transduced with AGT103, that these cells had a decreased ability to infect other susceptible cells. A crucial part of HIV's pathogenesis is its ability to deplete CD4 T cells from the host. In cells that were transduced with AGT103, this ability was inhibited and actually protects these primary CD4 T cells from HIV-induced death. After assessing AGT103's ability to function, the authors next asked, well, how do you best culture these cells and not just inform them of the world around them, but to really increase their levels to be used for therapy? To do this, they stimulated cells with GAG peptides, which are derived from the GAG proteins in HIV, so they are specific against HIV. Now, they stimulated these cells with GAG peptides, 
they stimulated them with general T cell agonists, transduced them, and then harvested the cells. This gave them pretty good results, but they wanted to do better. To do this, they tried taking out the T cell stimulation step to reduce the amount of time it would take. And they found that this increased not only GAG-specific CD4 T cells, but also this increased CD8 T cell levels, which they didn't want. To try and combat this, they depleted CD8 T cells and repeated the protocol. Now, this worked pretty well, but this also gave them increased levels of NK cells, B cells, and gamma delta T cells, which they didn't want. So they repeated the process again by depleting all of those cells. They found that by doing this, they had a high proportion of T effector memory cells and some T central memory cells that express pro-inflammatory cytokines like interferon gamma, IL-2, and TNF-alpha, indicating that they would be effective at fighting HIV. To put this into perspective across trial runs, this is what the data looked like itself. You see that uh, they have a higher level of CD4 T cells by the, their final run. You can also see that uh, they slowly increased the amount of total cells that were GAG specific to about 10% of cell culture. What is most notable is that by optimizing their protocols, they were able to increase GAG specific CD4 T cells by about 2000 fold. After identifying good culturing techniques, they wanted to specifically see how well AGT-103 was being able to be transduced into these cells. They looked at this and found that about 20% of their total cells were being transduced. Of this 20%, 70% of them were CD4 T cells, and 50% of the total were active CD4 T cells. So that indicates that they would be effective at fighting HIV. So in their experimental process so far, they were able to isolate, activate, deplete, transduce, and expand T cells that were specific against HIV in about 12 days. However, they wanted to be able to automate this process. Now to automate this process, they used a machine called the Clinimax Prodigy. What this machine does is it isolates, activates, transduces, and expands T cells derived from patients. However, the expansion step wasn't ideal for their CD4 T cells. So they cultured these cells additionally in the GREX 500 MCS. What this does is it allows for the expansion of cells without having to handle them too much. So that way the cells expand a lot more. When comparing these automated processes to their small batch processes, they utilized human samples and found that the automated processes work in a similar or better fashion than the small scale processes. Now, altogether, the authors of this paper found that by isolating immune cells and in particular CD4 T cells and transducing these cells with AGT-103, that is able to deplete CCR5 levels in the cell and reducing the levels of uh, VIP and TAT from HIV. AGT-103 is able to reduce the amount of cells that are able to be infected by HIV and reduce the ability of infected cells to infect other cells. The authors then found a method that is able to reliably expand these CD4 T cells across patient samples to be used for infusion back into the host for a way to fight HIV infection. Now, I always think it's interesting to see how cells can be manipulated to do certain functions. But this information is also significant in progressing towards a cure for HIV. It's significant because it shows that AGT-103 is able to prevent HIV infection of new cells. And it also shows that CD4 T cells can be stimulated specifically against HIV. These CD4 T cells can then be effectively grown to high enough levels that could be used for therapy in the future. All science is basically a stepping stone for new knowledge, and these steps are driven by questions. I had a few questions of my own when going through this information. My first question has to do with the low transduction rates of lentivirus. Can this transduction be improved? Because 20% isn't a lot. So by using small molecules, can this transduction of T cells be increased? My next question has to do with just the nature of HIV. How does HIV's mutation rate affect this treatment? along that same sort of vein, how effective is this therapy at actually preventing or curing HIV infections? Now, only time will tell, but I am excited to see those results. My final question is, what do you think? What sort of ideas or questions popped into your head when hearing about this information? I would love to hear about it in the comment section below. Also, let me know if there are any topics that you would like to hear about in the future. Ultimately, I hope that you learned something but more importantly, that you enjoyed your time doing so. So if you did, give this video a like and subscribe for more in the future. So thanks for sticking around, and I will see you next time.